M65 history. At 28 miles, the M65 is hardly the longest motorway in the United Kingdom. In 2011 it turned 30 years old, so it isn't even the oldest. Despite all this, it proves itself to have an absolutely fascinating history that is fraught with political wrangling, local controversies, and a number of firsts. The story begins, as these stories often do, in Lancashire immediately after the Second World War. 1949-69, Early Days. A quick glance at the famous 1949 document, The Road Plan for Lancashire, shows no improved roads running east-west through the Calder Valley. Whilst it seems a rather glaring omission with the A679-A646 corridor forming a major trunk road through the region, it is worth noting that during the Second World War the northeast Lancashire cotton towns were experiencing something of a renaissance following the depression of the 1930s as military uniforms were acquired amongst other manufactured goods for the war effort. Therefore the principal traffic flows were to and from Manchester, not Preston. However, the resurgence in cotton did not last long after the war, and the decline of the cotton towns began once again in earnest during the 1950s. Sir James Drake realized that improved road links were required in a report from 1960 which, amongst other things, proposed massive improvements to what is now the A6068 corridor to provide bypasses of Nelson and Fence. This scheme was duly completed but it still only provided single carriageway roads and did not connect well with the A56 towards Manchester, a chronically overcapacity single carriageway route which was mostly urban with 30 miles per hour speed limits. The 1949 plan had addressed the need to upgrade this route significantly but logistically this was to be a problem as the A56 ran across hills and through valleys, none of which were particularly free of development. In the late 1960s, a program of housing development was proposed in the Preston area, and was designated as the Central Lancashire New Town. This opened up a wealth of development opportunity in northeast Lancashire and a report was commissioned in 1969 to address the inadequacy of transport links between the proposed new town and Köln. The M65 was about to be born. 1969-74, a motorway is born. The North East Lancashire Project Study, NELPS, determined that the rapidly declining Calder Valley required a new fast route between the M6 slash M61 and Colon to facilitate development and encourage movement between the new town and the areas to the east. This route, to be motorway standard, would supersede Route 5, better known as improvements to the A59. This explains why today both the Clevero and Wally bypasses, opened in 1970 comprise of simple single carriageways with room for future proofing. The fast route would begin on the M6 at Prospect Hill, and would also plug into the M61 at a restricted access junction, before heading immediately to the east, passing rural villages such as Gregson Lane and Riley Green before entering the urban area of Blackburn. The route through the town was contentious, with leafy suburbs being bulldozed until the motorway hit the edge of the town centre and paralleled the East Lancashire line. At Nova Scotia the Blackburn Inner Relief Road would have commenced and looped around to rejoin the motorway at Copy Nook before continuing eastwards towards Whiteburk and rural areas once again. Beyond Whiteburk the motorway would have continued to the south of Rishton whilst also passing Accrington to the north and providing a spur road into the town. The route, still continuing vaguely northeast, continued past Hapton and towards Burnley where the Halifax Trunk Road would have diverged. At Burnley itself, an improved A671 linking to the A59 and A6068 corridors would have branched to the northwest, with the motorway curving around the northern end of Briarfield and Nelson before terminating on the A56 on the outskirts of Colne. The motorway itself west of Blackburn was to be further bolstered by improvements to the existing network, for instance, the A674 corridor was to provide a high-speed link between Blackburn and Chorley, 
and the A677 was to be improved as well. Ultimately, of these ambitious proposals, only a short segment was constructed, a single carriageway bypass of Alton on the A674, to provide better connectivity with the M61 at Junction 8. A number of alternative routes were considered, but discounted as being inadequate for the expected volumes of traffic by 1993. These options ranged from minimal improvements to existing roads, to a frankly bizarre proposal to plug the motorway into the A6119 at both ends causing a break in the high standard route. None of these options were explored further than a line on the map but they did have detailed reasons for their rejection. However, the 1969 proposal did not remain static, by 1972 numerous amendments had been placed into it including a potential extension to the Air Valley Motorway in Yorkshire, and the rerouted A56 improvements avoiding the urban valleys between Rawtonstall and Burnley, which also provided a bypass for the A680 through Accrington. Further improvements to the existing A56 in order to bypass Colne and Fowlridge, connecting the motorway to the A59, were also drafted. To the west. Proposed improvements to the A677 were deleted, but a possible link to Long Ridge was explored. Further road improvements were penciled in for the major towns, all to be tied into the new motorway. Such ambition was behind these plans that completion dates as early as 1978 were put forward. Alas, less than a year after the publication of the 1972 sub region report, the oil crisis struck and most road projects were suddenly on hold as the country faced three-day working weeks and rotor power cuts. However, despite the enormous political upheavals of the early 1970s the Calder Valley fast route continued to proceed, with detailed design of the Whiteberg to Colon section well advanced by 1974. This was not the case with the M6 to Whiteberg section, which had numerous setbacks. For a start, Blackburn Council was not in favour of the motorway being routed through the town centre, despite their ambitious redevelopment schemes to demolish over 110 acres of the town for modern development and new roads. In the end, financial pressures scaled this down to a mere 12 acres and the final phase of the initial town centre redevelopment did not open fully until 1981. At the same time, the sections of motorway to the east were being extensively designed. In 1973 a planning application was submitted for the Burnley to Colne section of the motorway, requesting dual three-lane carriageways following the experience of having to widen the Preston Bypass in the early 1960s. The Treasury refused to fund such a scheme, requiring the scaling back of the plans to dual two lanes with no provision for future widening. These eastern sections, not being connected to any trunk roads were to be principal route motorways, that is to say that Lancashire County Council would be the highway authority, not central government. This view of the council was that upon completion of the eastern link to Yorkshire and the Air Valley motorway, control of the route should be passed to central government. However, the fact the motorway was under the remit of Lancashire allowed the easternmost parts scheme to progress much quicker than it would have done otherwise and by 1978 construction of the first length between Burnley Barracks, Junction 10, and Rediford, Junction 13, was well underway. By contrast, the sections under control of central government did not commence until much later. 